They've been part of my life. The ships, and the river, and the tides, as long as I can remember. It's what you might call inevitable, I suppose, because I was born and brought up in this part of Liverpool, right on the waterfront, almost among the docks. Some people would call it a slum. Only I didn't think of it that way when I was a little girl in the year 1919. It's just on the boil. How is she? Is there anything else I can do? You're a good girl and your mother's going to be all right. It's unnatural to hate your own father, but I just couldn't help it. I shall never forget the last time I saw him. He came along to my school. Hello, Dad. You took your time about it, little Nora, didn't you? You're off to sea again? Now, look here, listen careful, Nora. I want you to give a message to your ma. Tell her I've signed on the ship, O'Neill. I'm sailing right away. We've got to catch the tide, see? Aren't you going home first? There's no time for that. When will you be back? It's a long trip. But tell your ma if she doesn't hear from me for a few months... Have you made out your allotment money for ma? Here, you keep your place. A kid like you talking about allotment money. We've got to have something to live on while you're away. Have you arranged for ma to get her money? Well, uh, 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 tell your ma I'll send her a postcard and give her all the details. Can't waste any more time now. And uh, give me love to your ma and to little Connie. You're not coming back. Ah, go on with you. Peter McCabe's not the sort to be shipwrecked or washed overboard. <laughs> my old man's a fireman and an elder limps the boat. Ma, you forget to write. So long, Nora. You'll be a fine wench when you grows up. <laughs> he wears cool blimey trousers You're and a little blimey hat. He wears no blasted collar. Is it the end of Dempstroth if Ma's to go to? Where'll she get the money? Where'll she get the money? He didn't send a postcard. He didn't even send a sixpenny postal order. And I wondered if he knew when he went away and Ma was going to have a baby. Well, you've got a baby brother now. What about Ma? Oh, she's fine. She wanted a boy. <laughs> Can I see her? Not yet. She's going to sleep. Here. 
When did you eat last? Connie and me had some bread and marge this morning, but... We're all right, both of us. We're not hungry. You both go right away and get yourself something to eat. Something hot, nourishing. Understand what I mean? And I see about you two girls. From tomorrow, you'll be looked after. You're not going to take us away from Ma. Oh, no. She's a good mother, but she needs help just now. I help all I can. Before I go to school in the mornings and when I get back, I'll look after the baby so Ma can go to work. She won't be able to do that for a bit. Now, away with you. If Ma lost her job, I don't know what had happened to us. Has the baby come yet? It's a boy. Connie! Connie! Got a baby brother. Am I going to eat? Woo. That better, Ma? What are we going to call him? Peter, I suppose. Same as his father. Oh, no, Ma, no! I won't let you! I know how you feel about him, love, but after all, he's your father. And he always wanted a son. Any other name you like, please, Ma, please. All right, love. We'll think of something else. I know. We'll call him George Alexander. That's a funny sort of name. I saw him once on the stage. The royal court it was. Sir George Alexander. He was a wonderful actor and such a handsome man. Handsome man! Handsome man! Be quiet, Connie, and get down. You know Ma isn't well yet. It was the first time your father ever took me to the theatre. He'd rather have gone to a musical. But he let me have my way. He wasn't sure I was going to marry him then. I wasn't sure myself. Hello there, George Alexander. When you grow up, you've got to be good to your ma. She must be proud of you to make up for what father did to her. It was a proud day for mother and me, 12 years later, when that letter arrived. on it. We haven't been doing anything wrong, have we? Honey, did you get like that? Well, I wasn't to know the postman was coming, was I? It isn't as if we get many letters. There was I scrubbing the floor and it came straight through the letterbox into the bucket. Yeah, I wonder what it can be. You don't think the rent's gone up, do you? If it had, the collector would tell you himself. Why not open it? I'm scared, too. I've never seen one like this. It says here, Corporation of Liverpool. Pleased to inform you that your son, George Alexander McCabe, has been awarded a scholarship. Tenable from September next at the... Hey, Lim let me see. There's no doubt about it. This is a step up in the world for the McCabes. Hey, fancy have George Alexander wearing a college cap. I wonder how much they cost. It says here, full maintenance grant in cases of proved necessity. Well, that's us, isn't it? It would happen on a Saturday afternoon when he's out playing football. Hey, we must give him a treat for his tea. Something tasty. I tell you what. George Alexander, what have they done to you? Here, sit down. Who did it? Chap I know. He said, there's some of our fathers alive and some of our fathers what's dead. But some don't have any fathers at all. When a chap says things like that, you've got to go for him. I knocked one of his teeth loose. That's right, George Alexander. You stick up for yourself. If anyone hits you, you hit back. 
What are you saying, Nora? Another beating like that and the boy will be dead. Not him. Not our George Alexander. Does it hurt, love? A bit. Your quads come. Nora? Yes, love? Why does he stay away so long? I know other chaps whose dads go to sea. But they always come back sometime or other. But only real sailors like your father go on long voyages. San Francisco to Shanghai and back. And then on to South America. Oh, it takes years and years. Now you read this. We'll celebrate this in style. I've got a quid saved up, and we'll blow it all tonight. Now, nah, Ma, none of that. We'll go to the Empire, all of us. It'll be the best evening we've had for years. Has anybody here seen Kelly? K E W Y. Anybody here seen Kelly? Find him if you can. He's as sad as old Antonio. He's left me on my own. Anybody here seen Kelly? Kelly from the Isle of Man. Alexander, nobody would ever think you'd won the scholarship. Say you're sorry to the gentleman. Well, that's all right. But say it, George Alexander. I'm sorry. I'm thirsty as well. Now, what can I get for you? We wait our turn, thanks. You have to wait a long time. But come on, I'm not just being fresh. I'm serious, honest I am. Serious about what? About getting you a drink. Somehow, I don't think you'll be able to get one for yourself. Now, what's it to be? <laughs> Double scotch for a young man? Large whiskey and soda, please. Yeah, that's enough of that. Don't you dare offer him whiskey. No, look, my lad, it's lemonade for you. We'll all have lemonade. That'll be... Uh, I know, four and one that makes five. Miss! <laughs> Here you are, Ma. Shameless little... Shameless little, little what, Ma? Never you mind. Really, Ma, as if I was a child. It's just what you are. Well, I never. And you telling me about making eyes at those boys. Well, fancy Anne Nora. Well, whoever he is, I'm sure he's very nice, or she wouldn't be speaking to him. Well, why shouldn't I enjoy myself, too? Talking to one gentleman like Nora there is one thing. Making eyes at a whole pack of silly, empty-headed young louts is quite different. You know that feeling when something starts to happen and you feel sure that you know what you're going to do next and even what you're going to say next? You mean it all happened before? Well, I don't know about that. But it's as if you know your destiny and you're glad. Yes, I have felt that sometimes, not often. Well, it's never happened to me before. It is now. It was a real bitter look for me coming here tonight. Oh, there's the bell. I must go. Oh, but there's plenty of time. Oh, no, there isn't. Goodbye, Mr. Satterthwaite. Oh, I wish you'd call me Ben. All right. Goodbye, Ben. Well, when am I going to see you again? Oh, don't suppose ever. Oh, but please, I'll wait for you. I'll see you after the show. But, but please, I sh shan't have a chance of seeing you again for three whole weeks. My ship sails tomorrow. What's the matter? So you're on a ship. Yes, a fine ship, too. I'm the fourth engineer. Just come back on my first long trip. Here today, gone tomorrow. What do you mean? It's only that I have no use for sailors. I suppose some other seagoing chap let you down. You didn't get married to him, did you? Or engaged? You got it all back to front, mister. But I, I'm different. I'm not like this other chap, whoever he is. He was different. And every time he shipped off, the minute he was off duty, he'd rush to see me. Well, I never. Ben Satterthwaite. Mm -hmm. well, you fairly come and go, don't you? Just docked. 
I didn't expect you till next week. That's what you said in your letter. The minute the gangplank was fixed, I pushed everyone aside, including the captain, and came straight along here. To see me? Oh, no, just to see that the old Mersey was still flowing in and out. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I should be flattered. The fourth engineer dashing ashore. Third engineer now. I've been promoted. Low tide, and then high tide again. Nothing can stop it. Just as well. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any docks, any ships, any Liverpool, any you and me. Every ship's got to catch the tide, you know. That's what my father said. What he meant was he was going away and never coming back. You seem to take it out of me because of what your father did. It isn't fair, you know. I know, Ben, I know. Sometimes a thought comes to my mind, and... I just can't help it. Ma, can I finish the jelly? Yes, love, of course you can. Anyway, you won't be getting married for a bit yet. It's not as if I was going to lose Nora right away. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I want us to get married the minute I come back from my next trip. I don't hold with long engagements. He didn't know. None of us knew then that the slump was setting in. And now the docks are at a standstill. Ships are idle. Thousands are out of work. My Ben's amongst them. It's been going on like this for two years. I only saw one ship coming in this morning. Well, there were eight. Try them all. Nothing doing. Just think, two whole years, a ship's engineer without a ship. It's not going to last forever. There's a timber boat coming in tomorrow. As old as the Ark. Diverted from Glasgow, so there's a chance the other chaps may not have heard about her. Benediction, that's her name. Benediction. Ben. Benediction. Oh, but don't you see? That's an omen. A good omen. Maybe we'll get married soon. Uh, Nora, there's something I've got to say. You remember when we first got engaged? Do you realize how long ago it was? Of course I do. All that time I've been out of a job. It's a rotten bad bargain for you. Who said so? I'm using up your life, holding you, but I can't marry you. If you feel, if you want... Ben Southwaite, what are you getting at? What I'm trying to say is this, if you... Well, I don't and I won't, so there. I love you, and whatever happens, I'm going to stick to you. Yeah, that Mrs. Gibson. She's at it again. Oh, well, she's only trying to liven the place up. It needs it. If her husband had any idea the way she carries on when he's at sea. Has Ben got a ship yet? No. Hey, don't worry. He will. And then you'll get married. And off he'll go like the rest of them. Away for months on end. You won't like it, you know. You'll be lonesome. What do you mean, Mrs. Duncan? <laughs> Mind you, I was just the same myself before I got married. 
always thinking how nice it'd be to have someone to cuddle up against. <laughs> Don't know that I've learned better since. I must fly now. Good night, Mrs. Duncan. Gustin, that's what it is. Boozing. And all as with some man or other. Noise. We'll have to complain to landlord. No, no, I don't want to see the landlord. What up? Have you gone off your rocker, Ma? There's a gentleman coming to see Connie. At least, he's going to take her out tonight. It's that Mr. Bruno we've heard so much about. Oh, him. Where is Connie, anyway? Getting herself ready. So we've all got to turn the place upside down, just because Mr. Maurice Bruno has condescended to honour us with his company. You don't behave like this when Ben comes. Don't be so daft. Ben's different. He certainly is. I mean, he's more like one of the family. It would be the first time Mr. Bruno's been inside the place. We must make a good impression. He, do you know, Nora, he even sent a telegram to say what time he was coming. It's up there on the mantelpiece. Me aunt nearly stopped beating when I opened the door and saw telegraph boys staring at me. I knew it was too early for the Irish sweep. I thought somebody must be dead. I wondered if... If he might be father. Isn't it about time you gave up hope of ever hearing from him again? Yeah, I've never dusted that mirror. I'll do it. Right, love, well, I'll go and tidy up a bit. You know, I think Mr. Bruno's serious about Connie. Otherwise, he wouldn't call on her at her home and send a telegram. He's the sort that makes use of mirrors. You make me sick, Nora. Jealous, that's what you are. Just because my boyfriends are smart and make money. Not like... Oh, give over. Tell you what, Nora, you've got no taste. You've got no savvy, either. What do you want to hitch yourself up to a ship's engineer for? With all this unemployment, too. You leave my Ben alone. Oh, I wouldn't have him if he was offered me on a plate. Stop it, you two. Hello. Oh, none of that now. Well, get over. Anyway. Remember, we're in my home now, Miss Bruno. This is my mother. Delighted, I'm sure. I do. That's my other daughter, Nora. Oh, hello. We've already met. Oh, that's the old man, isn't it? Yes, that's my husband. Uh, perhaps Mr. Bruno would like a cup of tea. No, thanks. It's just ready. Oh, all the more for you, then. Connie told me about him. Very sad for you, but uh, after all, a hero's death. The captain must go down with his ship. That's the tradition of the sea, as they say. But time we've got to move on, isn't it? That's right. You'd uh, better be powdering your nose, sweetheart. I won't be a sec. Moonlight Nice bit of cloth, isn't it? Smart cut, too. You might almost say I designed the suit myself. Oh, you've got to dress well in business, you know. What business are you in, Mr. Bruno? Marine insurance. That's my line. Oh, fancy. Nora's young man, he's a ship's engineer. Oh. Oh, I, uh, I don't have anything to do with that side of it. Freight, that's what I deal in. I've got a nice little agency. Seems to me the only people who get on these days are loudmouth swankpots. Are you trying to pass any nasty insinuations, Nora McCabe? Of course she isn't, Connie. What an idea. Nora never meant anything at all. You see, Ben's one of the unemployed, and all this time, Nora and Ben have been waiting to get married. Well, it gets on the nerves, you know. Other people's troubles are no concern of Maurice Bruno. That's my motto. Here, I've got something for you. A present for a good little girl. A couple of tickets for the Empire tomorrow night. Best seats in the house, these are. Oh, I thought you and me was going. Oh, I changed my mind. I'll take it for a real drive instead, eh? Take a fiancé, give him a treat. No, thank you. Nora, it's very kind of Mr. Bruno. I don't want them. Take them or leave them. It's all the same to me. 
Right, Connie? And it's time we step on the gas. So long, folks. And that is good shuttings to bad rubbish. Well, since he's not staying to tea, we'll take the best cloth off. Ah, George Alexander's very late tonight. Hi, right, clear off! Come on, get out of it! Come on, push off! E, what a wreck! What's it supposed to be? Very good, An old bone shaker. Making a mess of my car? Go on, clear off. Clear off yourself. You call that a car? I so late, George Alexander? Oh, nothing. Well, hurry up and get your supper. I've got some spotting to do this evening. It's Latin first period tomorrow, and if I don't know these irregular verbs, I shall be kept in. And then I shan't be able to play for second team. So I suppose they'd lose the match. Women make me wild. that on me. I know you know I speak. I'm not your property either. I bring you out and I give you a good time and what do I get in return? The pleasure of my company and that's more than you deserve. Shut that blasted window. Come on, up with you. You'll be getting that sack if you're late again at the shop. No, oh, shut up. Get out of it. You're born lazy, that's what you are. Who said I wasn't? Oh, but I'm not half so lazy as I'm going to be when I'm married. I shall lie in bed every morning. The lady's made to bring me a cup of tea and breakfast in bed. No scrubbing floors and looking after dirty kids for me. Not when I marry Morris. Well, why not? He's not the marrying sort. You're not in love with him. Depends what you mean by being in love. You'd know if it ever happened to you. Well, I hope it never does if it means hitching myself up to an out-of-work sailor. Oh, shut up. I'm sick of your beastly remarks. Oh, well. You'll always be poor, Nora. And as for him not being the marrying sort, you just leave that to me. I know how to handle him. Oh, cool as ice. When you've got money, you can afford sick carpets on the floor. Soft and warm. You know, the kind your feet sink into. Like they have in big hotels. I wouldn't know. I don't go to big hotels. No, of course you don't. You don't get asked out, do you? <laughs> sort of a job. Hey, you. 
The captain wants to see you. And McCabe. Luke's slippy about it. Peter McCabe. Yes, sir. The second engineer is pressing the case, so I had to bring it up to you. Cappadocia, Skiros. Well, that must have been when Ned Rimmer was a master. Alice Hayes, Vulcan. Been on the China run, too. Bandalore, made of all the inns. Well, the man's got a good long record. A few drunks. Well, hang it all, Chief. If the poor devils don't have a booze now and again, they'd never stick the life. I think we ought to give him another chance. Put him back on firing the boilers for a bit. He won't like it, but it'll sweat some of the rebelly Irish out of him. What do you say? It's an idea, sir. I hate to part with a man when he's getting a bit too old to find another ship easily. Come in, McCabe. You are, McCabe. That's your pay for the trip. Sign your name. Now, listen to me, McCabe. We sail again tonight. That's OK by me, sir. But uh, I'd like to go ashore, though. But I'll be back on board in good time, fit and sober. Come back and listen to me. I've had some bad reports about you, McCabe. You're insubordinate. You make trouble with the other men. You're a thoroughgoing sea lawyer, that's what you are. I know it's my job. I'll give you one more chance. Only one, understand? Here, yeah, what are you getting at? When we sail tonight, you're no longer a greaser. You work in the stokehold. It'll teach you a lesson. If you behave sensibly this trip, I'll consider it again. Back to the fairness is me with my record. I'll see Daddy you in... Eddie McCabe, there are plenty of younger men. Younger men, I'll shut them. Here, sign me book and I'll get off your blasted hooker as fast as ever I can. Trimming fairness is... Not that I've got nothing against you, Chief, or you, sir. And I know you've only said what your duty bound to say. But I know who's got this in for me. Yeah. And he'd better watch out for himself. special little pet. Finished. Worn out. Only fit for the scrappy. in Chester. Oh, so we're going over the water. I'll take it the best place I know. I'm not asking you in. You don't mind? No. It's only that I'm tired. You don't have to explain anything. have known you. You go away and leave a bit of a girl and you come back and find a grown woman, eh? What's the matter? Have you forgotten your dad? No. I haven't forgotten.
If you're looking for your ma, she's not here. <coughs> I found the door open, so I just walked in. How is the old girl? She's all right. And, uh, and little Connie? You both working? Yes. Well, that's fine, isn't it? Why did you have to come back after all this time? Well, you don't think I'd desert my wife and children, do you? Of course not. You just forgot to write and send us your address. You just forgot to send any money to Ma. You just forgot for 14 years. Honest, I, I never thought it was as long as that. Oh, I know I've done you wrong, but I never meant to. Do you know, time and time again, I, I saved up a bit of money to send to your Ma, but, oh, I've had cruel bad luck, I have. I've been robbed, too. <laughs> They put me in prison once. <laughs> in Chile, that was. No fault of mine, either. I suppose you think it's been easy for Ma, bringing up your kids on memories and promises? You're hard, Nora. That's what you are. Hard. But I didn't come home here to make a row. All I'm trying to tell you is that I... I was born under a wandering star. I can't seem to settle nowhere. But now that you and little Connie are grown up and earning your own living, well, maybe you won't be needing me quite so much. But that's all right, don't worry. This is just a little friendly visit. Well, aren't you going to give me a cup of tea? There's no place like home. I'm glad you kept this old armchair. There. <laughs> uh, this is the one my Aunt Kate gave you, Ma and me, when we was married. <laughs> Uh, she was a funny old rag, she was. Do you know, I don't think she ever liked me much. I can't think what. <laughs> well, I know. Here, you've collected quite a lot of new furniture. <laughs> cool. Well, I never did. My old razor case. And my razor in it, too. And not a speck of rust on it, either. Your old mum. Sentimental old girl your ma is. Fancy her keeping this for me all them years. When do you expect her home? Not before you've gone, I hope. You won't get round her this time. I still remember the way you used to come home drunk and make ma cry. Yeah, you shut your trap. You may think you're grown up, but I'm still your dad and I'll have you treat me respectful. Too much lip altogether. That was a terrible thing to say to your own father. Why, oh, I haven't had a drink all day. Here, smell my breath. A reformed character. Now, come on, why not let bygones be bygones and let's enjoy ourselves while we can? I'll tell you what, I'm feeling a bit tired, so I'll pop in there and have a lie down in your mum's bed, and when the old girl comes home, then we'll all pop down to the pub and have one before we turns in. <laughs> you don't think you're going to sleep in there? Here, what's that got to do with you? Well, it won't. She's forgotten you. You're nothing to her now. You're not even to touch her, you beastly swine. Call your father a swine, would you? <laughs> yeah. That's gratitude for the good home I've given you. Swine, am I? I'd rather die than stay in this cold hearted hole. Swine, am I? If there's any justice in this world, my curse will blast the light out of your eyes. Oh, it isn't right, is it now? For a lady to be drinking all on a lonesome. That's soon put right. I see you've got uh, two glasses there. Oh, I must have known you were coming. Them's the first kind words I've had said to me oh. today. Oh. You're very good else, ma'am. 
And to you, sailor. Oh, that's a lovely drop of scotch. <laughs> a broken doll. Would you like me to play it for you? Many is the time I've heard Karen Smain take the roof off with that one at the Empire. You called me baby doll a year ago. You told me I was very nice to know. I soon learned what love meant, I thought. Well, thanks, Mrs. Duncan. It was nice of you to ask me in. You're welcome. I do enjoy a cup of tea. <laughs> I dare say Nora will be home by now. My dear, you've got a remarkably fine voice. Have I, love? Have <laughs> I? Oh. <laughs> to turn your own father out. Nora, how could you? It's no use, Ma. I can't pretend. As soon as I saw him standing there, I... all the same, blood's thicker than water. Look, Ma, you've got to be firm about this. As like as not, he's in the pub by now, but he might land back here any minute. And if you're soft with him, if you let him get round you, well, I'm scared for you. He never really had a chance, poor Peter. Taken away from school and sent to sea before he was George Alexander's age. But you wouldn't understand about that. Now, don't you go changing your mind again. Come on, Ma. But where'll we go? We'll find somewhere. Oh, I wish Ben wasn't down at the docks. <laughs> Looks as if we'll have to use these tickets after all. First house. We'll be in time if we get a move on. It's a blessing George Alexander's out at that school debate tonight. We'll collect him on the way back. You know, I knew you was a good sort the second I set eyes you on did? you. You did? Oh. <laughs> and handsome, too. You know, you don't often see a figure like that these days. Skin and bone, most of them. Like hair. <laughs> oh, well, here's to my figure, then. <coughs> oh, this drop of whiskey's doing me a part of good. You know, if I'd had just a couple of minutes with that stuck-up stink of a second engineer, I'd have made a proper mess of him. He had it in for me from the start. Chucks me on the shore just when every man in the dockyards is looking for the ship. Mind you, I'm just as good a man as ever I was. Uh, you don't see muscles like that every day of the week. Uh, you feel them biceps. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you giggle, woman. Them muscles means hard work. I bet you're a terrible man when your temper's up. <laughs> uh, but never with a lady. I'd never raise me hand to a woman in my life. Not that I haven't had provocation, mind you. Now, take my daughter, Nora. Ah, never mind. Hmm. You know your onions, don't you? <laughs> I'll bet you don't get kisses like that from a pen-pushing landlubber. Fond of me, sailor? Of course I'm fond of you. I'll tell you what the trouble is with Nora. She's a bit above herself. Never gave me a chance to make friends she didn't. I'm a rough diamond, but I've got a soft heart underneath. Do you know, I was almost in tears when you started to sing that song. Were you, love? Were you? It might all have been different if the old girl had been at home. Or Connie instead of Nora. Connie was just a nipper when I went away. But I could see then that she took after her dad. We'd get along together fine. Well, what about your son? You haven't said anything about him yet. Don't you try to be funny or I'll fetch you a fortney one. I've got no son. Whew. I must be off my head then. 
Why, all day long I see him running up and down the stairs out there. Only this afternoon he was going off to play in a football match, he was. Here, yeah, what are you getting at? My name's Peter McCabe, and that's my wife and daughters what live upstairs. I know nothing about no boy. Here. How old would he be? Fourteen or thereabouts. What's his name? George Alexander. By the living oaky, it's true, then. George Alexander. I remember she always said that if she had a boy, she'd call him after that actor chap. I've got a son. It's funny that Nora didn't tell you herself, isn't it? I've got a son. Maybe she had a reason. What reason? Well, you know how long you've been away. I only gave you the boy's age approximate. Maybe he isn't 14 oh, yet. Here. I'll have you know my wife's a respectable woman. I wouldn't have her mention not in the same breath as you. Bilka! Dirty, rotten Bilka! Let me in! Let me in, will you? I, I only want to see my boy. I don't mean no harm to no one. If you're there, son, let me in. It's only your dad home from sea. Only your old dad. Let me in! Double whiskey, quick. Haven't you had enough, mate? Enough? I don't know the meaning of the word. Come on, get a move on, will you? I'm not asking for credit. There you are. Help yourself. This is to drink the health of my son. Yeah. You'd be wiser to go home, cool off, and see your wife. He's got no wife! I've seen his papers. He makes no family allotment out of his pay. What do you say to that, my own special little pet, eh? Hey, the chap's celebrating his son's birthday. He must have a missus somewhere. Sure he has. One in every port. <laughs> What'll you have? Yeah, come outside. You think I'd fight a worn-out old runabout like you? Booze up to the eyes into the bargain? I'm gonna give you a bashing. And you're not simply drunk, you're paralytic. The ship's well ready. wasn't it, that ballet dancing. Mind you, I've seen better. 
that foreign dancer, what's her name? Uh, Pavlova doing the swan dance. You know, the one where the swan dies. And she flutters her arms and falls down all in a heap. And the music gets quieter and quieter. And then her head falls. And you know she's dead. Fella used to make me cry, that did. I saw it at the old empire with your father. He didn't care for it, I remember. Hey, my goodness, I've just remembered. Connie, she doesn't even know he's back. She's too full of that greasy Morris Bruno to bother about anything else. Sometimes, Nora, I don't understand you. After all, it was Morris gave us the tickets. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I didn't want to take them. Nothing would have made me but for... Right, sweetheart, you are. Now, drink it up. What's the hurry, anyway? That's the only way to get the taste of it. I was keeping it as a special surprise. We're going to look in on some friends of mine. They've got a nice little house. Well, they know we're coming, I suppose. As a matter of fact, they may be away. They gave me the key, told me to use the place if it was my own. I'll, um, I'll mix you a special kind of cocktail. Uh, perhaps not. It um, might be too strong for you. Oh? I can drink any cocktail that ever was made. Try anything once. That's my motto. Are you sure you're not scared? Scared? I can keep you in your place, Morris Bruno. Oh, perhaps you won't always want to. Joe. No, and it's going to get worse, I tell you. Ah, uh, whither you grousing your boat? You're cushy with the back seat of your pants stuck up against young boiler thing. That patent tea urn costs a lot of money, I tell you. Aye, but you've got a job. Oh, I am making me fortune, I am. Fishing out tea at a penny a cup can't even sell a rock cake these days. Well, what can you expect with two million unemployed? Well, there's one more from this afternoon. I signed on to the exchange today. Is that what put that smile on your face? And what's more, I do it again. <laughs> what's life without freedom? Anything's better than serving under the worst slave-driving bucko of a shipmaster that ever sailed the seven seas. You wouldn't mean Hargist, would you? Old platter-faced Hargist. You know him. Know him? He had me out once with the Holy Stone in the middle of the bay in a gale that would blow the teeth out of your head. Hargist, I've heard of him. Ah, he's a blagger. I cannot blame you for getting out of his clutches. You come on, I've drawn me back, pay. I'll stand you. Tina's never scoffed twice. Right. What about you, Jim? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, I might have noticed you was wearing a posh hat. What might you be, ship's officer? Used to be. Well, I used to be a deckhand, see? And now we're both on Where shore. Where's that ship you were just talking about? Why? I want that job. Don't talk, wet mister. You heard me say it was a deckhand's job. Oh, if you sign on with Hargis, you'll play the skin off your buck. I'll take anything you can hand out. Come on. Where is she? Where's she docked? I've got to get work, I tell you. She's not docked anywhere, mister. She sailed this morning. For China. <laughs> Accident? No, murder. Yeah, they're a bit late. They, they've just taken the corpse away. Look, you, you can see the blood on the road. And his throat cut, poor devil, with a razor. <laughs> Ship's engineer, they were. Ship's engineer? How'd you know? They had some of the officers here from the ship identifying the corpse. That ship over there, they were. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Well, you're a funny sort of chap. You not seem to be interested in murder. I saw McCabe with my own eyes, going off in a black Mariah. 
He had handcuffs on him, too. A chief engineer anywhere about? Or was he the one who... Uh... No, that was the second. Well, it's the chief I want to see. Down there. All right, thanks. Want me? I'm looking for a ship. You need an engineer. Your second is... All uh... right, you don't need to tell me. I know. Horrible business. Yeah. Were you there? Uh, I saw the ambulance driving away, that's all. You're pretty smart on the job. The chap hasn't been dead more than 15 minutes. Well, there it is. You need an engineer. I'm on the spot. Can't be done. I know nothing about you. I haven't got time to find out. The ship's due to sail at midnight. If we don't, we may miss the tide. And then the police may delay us with all sorts of inquiries. Look, here are my papers. If I'm a dud, you can put me ashore at the next port of call. But I'm not a dud. I don't believe you are. Can you give me half an hour to collect my kit? You're mighty keen, aren't you? Keen? You don't know how keen I am. Nora, what can this be? It's from Ben. Oh, you give me quite a turn. got a ship. He's just signed on for an engineer. He'll be sailing tonight. He'll be gone by now. And I wasn't there to say goodbye to him. Does he say how long he'll be away? No. But he says he'll write as soon as he can. <gasps> That's the best bit of news we've had for I don't know how long. Ben will have money now and you'll be able to get married soon. Good night, Ma. Good night, Nora. Good night, love. Nora, see to the fire for me. I'm going to make some cocoa. I, I feel quite chilly all of a sudden. It just shows you never know when your look's going to turn. Ben. Benediction. It was a good omen. Go on, pour it out. I'm taking only one, remember? I dare say one will be enough. Oh, that's nothing. Not a bad cocktail at all. Happy days. When evening lights were low, when stars began to glow, I'd go around to see my loving baby. He was my only thing. He was my life. Yeah, that's enough for that. My lover. But he broke my heart. And someone What's the matter? N nothing. Nothing's the matter. Everything's fine. Oh, so and close in here. Oh. Why don't you go upstairs and lie down a bit, eh? Till you feel better. All right. You stay here. Please hurry back. Oh, please come back to me. But my love. You thought you'd been having me on, smart boy. But I knew what you were up to. I knew all the time. Hear my heart a calling. While my tears are falling, won't you listen to my plea? There's no if, no maybe. I'm your one and only baby. my only thing he was my life my dream he was my lover
that you, Connie? Does Mrs. Peter McCabe live here? Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, miss, at this time of night. Come in. What is it, Nora? What does he want? Are you Mrs. Peter McCabe, ma'am? Yes. Was your husband employed on a ship called the Benediction? I've no idea what he was on. What did you say? What name? Benediction, miss. I'm afraid I shall have to ask you a few questions, madam. Your husband has been arrested on a charge of murder. <laughs> Speak ill of the dead, but that engineer. I hated his guts, the same as everyone else did on this old hooker. Say, so, maybe we ought to send a vote of thanks to old McCabe. What the <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the matter with him? Looks as though he's going to heave his stomach up any minute now. Hey, mister, what's up? What's biting you? You get on with your work. There's no harm, is there, talking about an old pal who's down in his luck? He might have been a shipmate of yours once. Never set eyes on it. Well, how are you getting on? All right. Isn't it time we got more speed on? We must be out at sea by now. Ah, yeah, we're heading the other way. What do you mean? Up the river towards Manchester. Change of plan. What's the good of hiding from plain facts? A drunken murderer. Well, that's all he is. A nice man to have for a father. Do you think I don't know what all the girls at the store will be saying about me? I'll be lucky if I don't get the sack. Mrs. McCabe? Good morning. The Sunday Messenger will pay 50 pounds for an article, My Life with Peter McCabe. Uh, we'll write it for you. 50 quid? Just for talking to a man for half an hour? Go on, Ma, you take it. But, Ma, you'll never get another chance like this. All you've got to do, Mrs. McCabe, is just sign that form and leave the rest to us. No, thank you. Will you please go and leave her mother alone? Go, I tell you, please go. All right, all right. There's no need to get upset. In case you change your mind, Mrs. McCabe, that address will always find me. Thank you. Good luck. See you later, Ma. What did I tell you? Let's the whole neighborhood down. Poor Mrs. McCabe, it's terrible hard on her. Nora's the one who'll feel it most. After all, who'd want to marry the daughter of a murderer? I always Come had a Lord. feeling something like this was going to happen. Well, all I say is, if they've got 50 quid to chuck away, but as much entitled to it as anyone. After all, all kinds of people write about themselves in the papers. Countesses and baronets, and no one thinks any the worse of them for it, and it won't hurt him. <laughs> and he certainly owes us a bit. The number of times I've thought of throwing that horrible razor away, or selling it for a few shillings. Bye, Ma. I've got a date with Morris tonight, so I shan't be home till late. Only I didn't like to part with everything of his, and he'd taken all the rest with him when he cleared out, even his dirty shirts. Bye, Ma. About my husband, I want to see him, please. Been taken up, has he? What name? McCabe, Peter McCabe. Oh. Well, I've, I've brought my marriage lines. 
to show who I am and my son's birth certificate. Ah, you won't need those, ma'am. Oh. Well, you will let me see him. It's out of our hands. The magistrate put him on remand first thing this morning. What does that mean? He's at Walton Jail now. Already? He won't come up for trial to the next assize. There's plenty of time yet. No, there isn't. I must see him. I've got to see him. I can't help you about that, ma'am. Uh, you've to go to Walton Jail and apply there. But they will let me see him. Yes. When? But the sooner you get your application in, ma'am, the sooner you're likely to. Thank you. I thought you were at sea, miles away. You haven't lost a job, have you? Not on your life. Ship was diverted upriver to Manchester. We'd be there three days. The minute I was off duty, I caught the first train. Oh, there's so much I've got to tell you. waiting all this time. You're lucky I've turned up at all. I hope you're not getting any wrong ideas about me. Oh, of course not. But I've been reading the papers. Captain McCabe seems to have made a dramatic reappearance all of a sudden. Where are we going? Maybe we'll just drive round for a bit. Okay. Petrol's cheap enough, I suppose. I've got a certain position to keep up, you know. It might do me a lot of harm if I was seen about with you. Perhaps you'd like me to wear a thick veil. Ah, that's the girl. Always a snappy comeback. I tell you what, there's one place we can always go to, where we went last night. You think you can do just what you like with me? Now, have I ever done anything you didn't want me to? All I'm saying is, till it blows over, we've got to be very discreet. Very discreet. All right, Maurice Bruno. Drive on. I knew you'd come round. The whole way up the river, the crew talked about your father. And all I did was to keep my mouth shut. I wanted to tell every man Jack of them I was going to marry his daughter and I was proud of it. But the words simply wouldn't come. I just couldn't help it. My job was not yet secure and I was afraid. It was cowardly, that's what it was, but if I lost this job, I'd lost my chance of marrying you. Yes, I see your point. It would be very convenient for you to change your name. Not just now. Well, that's not quite what I mean. Oh, it isn't. You haven't by any chance been seeing yourself as Mrs. Morris Bruno. Well, why not? After all, every girl wants to get married sooner or later. Don't come that stuff on me. You're not a home girl. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. I never so much as dropped a hint about marrying you. Now, did I? Come on, have another drink. What do you take me for? Never mind. One thing you can be sure of. The girl I married is going to be nice mother. Like you! That's the way to talk. Now you are grown up. Come on, the fun's oh. only just started. Leave me alone. Take your rotten hands off me. Get out of here. Get out, I tell you. And you can go back to your slummy home on your own two feet. I want us to get married right away. I'll get a special license. We've waited so long, and this is our chance now that I'm working and earning. Oh, 
darling, with all this hanging over my mother, over all of us, how can I? We must. We simply must. If you want to know, I'm... I'm scared. Suppose something else crops up to put it off again. And from now on, I shall be away on long voyages. I shan't be able to be with you when things get even tougher. It's knowing I've got you, Ben. But that's not enough. As soon as you're my wife, everyone will know that I'm sticking by you. For better or for worse. Visitors from the cave. This is where those awaiting trial are detained. You'll find your husband quite comfortable. He'll be wearing his ordinary clothes, too. Something. This way. There you are, madam. I'll give you a knock when your time's up. You wait here, George Alexander. I'll call you in a bit. You're very quiet. But most are afterwards. It's a funny thing. I've had all sorts in my care. Frauds, thieves and poisoners. But it's never the ones that get caught for murder with violence that cause most of the trouble. Not by a long way. They lose their heads, that's what it is. Never afterwards, they get brooding over it. Over and over again. Makes you feel sorry for them. I, uh, suppose you'll get the rope. Perhaps, perhaps not. Strictly speaking, according to the law, it's no argument to say that he was mad drunk and didn't know what he was doing. I expect you'll be all right, though. Seems an awful cold sort of place, Peter. Here. You better sit down. Have you got some good warm underwear? Of course I have. I could do your washing for you. Ah, uh, they're cracked about washing here. They took away one lot of clothes and brought me another before they was even dirty. I'm not doing any work here. What do I want with clean clothes every week? Ah, but they won't see that. I'll bring you some pies next time I come. You used to love my pies. The best I ever tasted. Steady, old girl. It's, it's this waiting and waiting and nothing to do that I can't stand. It's putting me off my sleep. Imagine me not being able to sleep, suffering from nerves like a, like a white-faced clerk. Peter, how could you? How could you do a thing like that? I don't know. I don't properly remember what happened. I saw him lying there and... I knew he'd said something that had made me wild. But I, I didn't mean... Ah, uh, what's the use? I've done it, that's what they say, and... And now I've got to pay for it. But you know, that there's just one thing I'd like to find out. Somebody said... But I expect they were having me on. What did they say? It was something about... about you and me having... having another child. A boy. So we have. We have? Born after you went away. Then why didn't you tell me? I didn't know where to write to. You can't blame me for that. But before I went away... I didn't know then. I wasn't sure. He's a clever boy. He won a scholarship. No. He did. If, if I could just see him once, I'd be satisfied. 
You can if you like. I brought him along with me. He's in the corridor now. Come on in, George Alexander. Hello, Dad. It seems funny, us. Not knowing each other and yet being father and son. But that's my fault. I've nothing to be proud of, but cool. I'm proud of you. Peter McKay, with a boy going to college. Yeah, sit down, son. Come on, sit down. I got all night and day to rest there. Show your father your college cap, George Alexander. Put it on. Cool. That's smart, that is. And a gold badge, too. Here. Yeah. There's a motto here. What does it say? Experentia docket. French, eh? I expect you know what it means. It's Latin. It means experienced teachers. Does it now? Experienced teachers. Well, that's true enough. Look here, lad. Would you do me a little favor? Would you talk a bit of Latin to me? Oh, I know I'm ignorant and I shan't understand a word, but I can say to myself afterwards, I, I've seen my son and, and I've heard him talk in Latin. And then somehow I shouldn't feel such a, a no good after all. Would, would you do that for me? You can't talk Latin much. It's not like French. I could recite some poetry, if you like. Latin poetry? Yes. Well, look here. You put on your cap and, and, and stand over there so as me and your mother can see you. Arma vrunke cano troia qui primum aboris. I think the man wants us to go. Go first, love. Will you shake hands with me, son? It was nice of you to come and see me here. Ooh. Here. You have that. That used to belong to my dad. And when you grow up, you can keep your bag in it. Thanks, Dad. In the meantime, uh, what do you collect? Foreign stamps. He's got all sorts, Peter. You wouldn't believe. But he can keep his swaps in it. And now you'd better be going, son. And try and forget that you, you ever had an old. God bless you. I'll come in a minute. Peter, Nora got married yesterday. Good luck to her. Goodbye. 